Good evening and welcome to Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, and home of Monster Movie Night. I am your internet horror host, Bobby Gum Monster, and this is my pal and good co-host, Boris the Buzzard. We are here to welcome you, one and all, to come into our lovely home this evening to hope you enjoy yet another fascinating and enjoyable classic film. <laughs> right, Boris? Exactly. And tonight, folks, we have such a film. In honor of the line that we've been doing uh, along the way for the last uh, few weeks, right, Boris? It's uh, been about brains. Right? Right. And it's not zombies or anything like that. I know every time you hear brains nowadays, there's always a zombie somewhere tra trailing around looking for the brain. But it's not anything like that. This is about brains bringing them back to life or keeping them alive in heads and things like that. Right, Boris? I mean, we've had uh, the brain. We've had uh, the brain that wouldn't die. Uh, we had, which what, the head. And tonight, we have the atomic brain. That's right, we're getting more into the atomic age. This was uh, around 1964, and uh, so this will basically end our little jaunt and uh, of the series about brains, but it's a, it's a really great film to go out on. Don't you think so, Boris? I think so, too. So, uh, all right, have you guys got yourself a snack? Get ready. Turn down the lights a little bit. And we'll get ready for the uh, the atomic the atomic brain. Now let's go to it. Can death be outwitted? Is the secret of eternal life just around that corner? Today, medical science patches up mutilated bodies, transplanting human skin, eyes, limbs, even vital organs. Is the next step the transplantation of the human brain? Many scientists answer yes, but they pause and add a grim warning. For in the ancient folk legends, tales are told of blood-sucking vampires, crawling out of graves to live on the bodies of helpless victims. Is man now doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities, worse than the vampires of legend? Will ruthless men and women of great wealth and power greedily buy or steal the living bodies of the young and beautiful so their brains may live on forever? Such questions may seem fanciful, but at this very moment, scientists are working on the answer to brain transplantation, and human bodies are used. This girl was buried in a nearby cemetery yesterday. Only a few hours ago, her body was stolen. By Dr. Otto Frank, and brought to this hidden laboratory, he has grafted a living animal's brain into this newly dead body. If the experiment works, the next step will be the transplantation of a human brain. The brain cells are being reactivated by an atomic fission produced in the cyclotron. Has he found the way to outwit death? Or has he created another? Deep below, Dr. Frank takes the chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. The watchman's mind was not on body snatchers. Just his usual nip. Thank <laughs> you. 
inside the vault, a body waits. This is one of the doctor's mistakes, a monstrosity, an animal's brain grafted to a human body. Leaving the dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master, Dr. Frank. Here beneath the old mansion, the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue in dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. And Eddie March wonders. Has she been a fool, squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer? Ah, but to start life again in a brand new body, beautiful and young, no price can be too high for that. Can she really trust the doctor? Can she really trust anyone? Hasn't everyone tried to cheat her? Wanting her money while they smiled at her ugliness? But they never got a penny. Oh, how she made them sweat. Especially this old fool, companion and gigolo. How many years she's kept him dangling on promises. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. That's the Austrian girl? Nino Rogue, 18, no family, pleasing personality, whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face. But she always smiles when she's spoken to, very likely. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurements. All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. Early at Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Payne, 62, who evidently interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was broken. The imprint of a huge pair of hands was found on his throat. It's the opinion of the police that the same gang that has previously... Ring for Dr. Frank. So that's what he was doing.
More of it. Focus, focus, Eddie. The doctor transplanted a brain from a live dog to a dead human body. You saw the creature walk out of that cylinder alive. How many failures since then? Still, it's your money. The bodies must be fresh. This specimen is excellent. And the police are looking for the body satchel. Why the local cemetery, Doctor? Are you trying to blaze a trail to our door? The final test was essential for your protection. As for the police, if they come here, I hit the switch. A nuclear reaction is set off. Close the circuit breaker. Ah. And in a matter of minutes, this house and any evidence it might contain becomes a radioactive hole in the ground. Be careful. But we can wait for that until after your operation. Well, nothing must go wrong. There's no sign of life. Watch. I'll be scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, I'll be able to look out. That's strange. A foreign domestic agency paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first trip? Yes. I'm awfully excited. Por <laughs> favor. I know speak English very good. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? This sounds like a sister act. You, too? Nina Rose? Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez? Deepest Mullins, sir. Eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No. I work for Mrs. March. Come along. 
three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. No families or friends within thousands of miles, no one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. Victor wondered which ones March would pick, the little Mexican, the girl from Vienna, or the buxom blonde. Victor knew his pick, but he still felt uneasy. Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl is insanity. Still, Hetty's plan to transfer her fortune to the new body had been brilliant. Unpleasant to think of what was going to happen to these girls, but a man has to consider his own future. What would happen to him if Hetty were to cast him off after all these years? Warm welcome to hang out. Well, there's your new home, girls. Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? No. Are there any other servants? No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring. Jolly little place this is. What was that? No one's to leave this house without permission. Now, hurry along. Hurry up. Now go. your luggage. Turn round. Slowly. Get the doctor. Get the doctor! As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. She doesn't have a brain. Might be advantages.
I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Victor, the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoiled spot I am. <laughs> Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police, employment agencies, immigration authorities, consulates? There will be no phone calls. Idiot. She's useless. There is one more test I should make. Do anything you want with her. The other two? Perfect medical specimens. All right, Anita. Get dressed now and wait for the others. Mrs. March, I am now giving you notice. I do not care to work in this house any longer. I demand that... You have signed an agreement. If you have any objection, you will discuss them with the immigration authorities as provided for in your papers. But, Mrs. March... Later. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Marilyn Monroe. Lucky girl. Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. <laughs> to both of you. <laughs> For me? in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. I'll have to show you. Nonsense. You'll be all right. Go on.
evit. She's not in her room. Yes. Victor left a little while ago. Maybe she went with him. She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. Yes. But she would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. Oh. It's funny, though. Mrs. March wouldn't even listen when I asked to be dismissed. This house gives me the creeps. She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. Be what in the world do you think you're doing? He told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? Oh. She left. Last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you. Another time. Yes, Mrs. March? Your name is it Nina. But Mrs. March, she's got polish all over hands, and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and downstairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. Send Nina to me. Yes, ma'am. I'll be in my room. Be come with me. I want to show you something. Anita wouldn't leave without taking her clothes. I think we'd better get out of there, fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You go now if you go with me. Last experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, 
the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body, and the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Anita was ready. Stop wasting your time watching internet porn and tune into Monster Movie Night right here at the Vortex. We thought we'd bring out in honor of the atomic brain, we would bring out, well, the atomic brain. And and in fact, oh, there it is. There it is. And Eric, and that once it gets started, it's very hard to get it to stop. You see, once you pl plug a little electricity into the atomic brain, can you see? Okay, let's get you a little closer. Oh yeah, there we are. Isn't that neat? <laughs> I think it's, he wants to get out. I think that's what he wants. Really? Is that? You want to? Yes, he, he, he wants to get out. Oh well. Oh dear. I, he's watched this movie so long now he's beginning to want to get out of the globe and, and do other things like they do in the movie. I suppose that's what it is. Yes? Uh, I think Boris, we're going to have to get him back into the... Uh, yeah, back in the little laboratory. What do you think? Yeah. Anyway, anyway, this is one of our exhibits from the museum, and you can get to see it when you come to see us here at Gargoyle Manor. Let's go back now to. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Out and just get out and go back to the atomic brain. Me, Nina. What about your clothes? Never mind, let's go.
B. B. Where are you? Answer me. I'm here, Mrs. March. She's locked us in. Open it. I said open it. Mrs. March. Well, you took long enough. The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You'll have to check the basement door. It broke loose. resent the way Mrs. Marsh treats you. I can't say that I blame you. Kitty's always been very fond of me, haven't you? Does she have all the instincts of a cat? Watch. Is that Anita? Where? Oh, I don't think so.
not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there's still the electric fence. The phone's dead. We can't get help that way. If we could get the car... That's it. Victor! Victor! He likes me, I guess. If you could get the keys from him... I was having a little nightcap. Who do you think you are pinching me? What? <laughs> Maybe you like some company. Someone like me? Mm -hmm. That's more like it. Don't you like me, Victor? Hans is chained. Let's go outside. Outside? I think I'd like that. You. Don't you know me? Anita, listen to me. It's... Ow! Ow! Any 
need to let me help you. Astonishingly complex, isn't it? The human eye. She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. How I need her all. She's dead. Nina, dear. Come along with us now. You've had a bad shock. Get out of here, both of you. The same would be. Friends of the Undead, it's Freak Show from Bordello of Horror. When I get my freak on, I'd love to get it on with Monster Movie Night with Bobby the Monster at monstermovienight.com. Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. I'm preserving the eye. Let me show you. Come over here. The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. Dee is a very lucky girl. You think that ironical? Let me explain. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs, kept a portion of an animal's heart alive for many years. For this, he received the Nobel Prize. And I, who have so far surpassed his effort... Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Carell. He was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. Your viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one, held by the medical society today, which forces me to work in a place like this, to give in to the whims of a foolish old woman, because she can supply me with the funds I need to continue my work. Take care of her until your plans call for something else. Or am I to be the next one, doctor? 
there. You got all the clothes? Yes. And made my hair appointment? I took care of everything on your list while you were talking with the lawyer. Hair appointment, Monday, 10 a.m., Charles of the Ritz, under Nina's name. I want Nina to model these later, after I've rested. You tell her. They're back. I'll have to leave you now. Remember, I'm going to try to get us out of here tonight. No. Forget about me. I won't go. B. Don't talk like that. Mrs. March had not realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's future wardrobe, but Mrs. March's future body. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. Does my uh, age at Lochinvar disturb you? Eddie, that's unkind. Shut up. You see, it's hard for a vain, stupid man to realize that he holds no attraction for a lovely young girl. You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. I'm not going to be needed at all. That's what you're saying, isn't it? After tomorrow, when... Victor! That's enough! Get out! If it's the way it's going to be, when what? Don't ask tiresome questions. That will be enough for tonight. I want us both to get some rest. Try to sleep. But Mrs. March... That's an order. Do as I say. You're not looking for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old man? What did you try to tell Mrs. March? Hmm? So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. The only thing is, of course, will really be you. Victor, please tell me. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow you'll be one of the richest women in the world. There's a press release. It's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March millions. Nina Rhodes is a lucky star. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion Destroyed by Fire. Cinderella Girl, Nina Rhodes, sole survivor. Only it won't be you. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. Please don't let it happen. You could help me and be get away. When you're a rich woman, you wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Get out of the car. And stay there. Victor, we too. We must come too. Wait a minute. Just to make sure.
Sign this. Thirty. to come with no. me. No. I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? I'll get Victor to help me and we will carry you. Did you want something from Victor, dear? Sit down, my dear. I'm afraid you're wearing yourself out with all this rushing round. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting. about to happen. You don't know what it's been like for me, living with this ugly body of mine. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. Well, nobody got any of it. I've never known what it was like to be loved for myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. March? Victor? <laughs> Victor was a fool. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank. A business woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. March. Just relax. Relax. paper making Vicky a legal guardian. That's right, isn't it? I did some something, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. You're getting better, aren't you? 
Why don't you try it on your own? I wonder now if Mrs. March didn't intend blowing me up, along with all the rest of this. You're a very wealthy woman now, Nina. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available. With the least amount of nuisance to myself. I could keep you under sedation until your signature was required. Or I could replace your brain with one more amenable. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. Do you, my dear? Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? <laughs> I guess the transplant would be better. It won't hurt. Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down. March did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come.
My Boris, that was a great film, wasn't it? I, I think it had lots of brain, right? <laughs> there were lots of atomic fueled brain, indeed. It was, it was something else. I hope you guys out there have enjoyed tonight's feature, the atomic brain, hmm? and uh, enjoyed seeing some of our uh, exhibits from the museum. And hope you've just enjoyed coming here and visiting Gargoyle Manor with me and Boris and having a sit down and a wonderful night of monster movies and just saying hello and howdy and getting to know each other here in the uh, in the manor. Hmm? We enjoy doing things like that, don't you, Boris? Yes, so do I. Well, it looks like it's that time again. And that's right, it's time for the old coffin. So... You guys, get ready for beds, we'll get ready for our coffins and your perch, Boris. And until next time, keep screaming. <laughs>